Hello and welcome to another video. Now some quadratic equations don't look as simple as the ones that you see generally because the x is just not x, they're doing something weird to the x. But as long as you can see it as a quadratic equation, just solve it as if the variable is the usual variable that you have. Okay, now if you can't solve it that way, you just want to replace whatever is there, whatever complexity is there, simplify it by substituting using another letter and you'll be fine. So look at this question. There are two methods I'm going to use in solving the same question. And if you look at this, this is x to the negative 2 plus 3x to the negative 1 equals 28. It would have been easier if you just give me x squared plus 3x equals 28. And I would rather make it simple by replacing x to the negative 2 with something else that's just a square. So remember that x to the negative 1, when you square it, it becomes x to the negative 2. If you apply the law of exponent, that when you square an exponent, what you do is you multiply that exponent by 2. So that's how we got this. So we can actually replace this with a letter. I'm going to choose k. So if we rewrite this expression, it's going to be k squared plus 3k equals 28. You won't change anything else, but you know that k is x to the negative 1. So for method 1, it's the substitution. So it's going to be k to the um, k squared, okay, plus 3k equals 28. Now, what is k? My k is x to the negative 1. Okay, that's the substitution that I've made. Or you could write it at the beginning, let k be equal to x to the negative 1. Okay, so, and we can solve this. Let's move this here. We have k squared plus 3k equals 0. We can factor this. How do we know what the factors will be? Well, the question is, what two numbers will you multiply to get negative 28? But when you add them together, you're going to get positive 3. Well, I know it's going to be positive 7 and negative 4. So I'm going to replace this and factor this into positive 7 and negative 4. Okay, so positive 7, negative 4. So this is going to be k plus 7 and k minus 4. Okay, equals 0. That will be the factored form of this equation. And then we can isolate each of these and solve. So we have k plus 7 equals 0 or k minus 4 equals 0. It leaves us with k equals negative 7 or k equals 4. So now remember, don't stop here because we need to go back and get x. The purpose of this equation uh, was to find the x, not to find k. We introduced k. So don't ever stop here. Okay, so we have to go back and say k is negative 7 and k is 1 over x. Um, x to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x and it's equal to negative 7 which tells me that x is equal to negative 1 over 7. Okay, that's 1. Or we can go here and say that um, 1 over x is equal to 4. So if you take the reciprocal of this, you take the reciprocal of both sides, that's a shortcut to this and you're going to get x is equal to 1 over 4. That was exactly what I did here. Same thing. So these are the two possible values of x if you use the substitution method. So now I'm going to use um, another method where I will not do any substitution, but I will recognize from the beginning what this expression actually means. x to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over x squared. Okay, plus 3 times x to the negative 1 is the same thing as 3 times 1 over x, which is the same thing as 3 over x. And I have 28 on the other side. So whenever you have rational expressions added or subtracted together in an equation, you want to get rid of the denominators. You want to make everything on a straight line. You don't want to have fractions in your equations because they tend to cause a lot of trouble. So get rid of the fractions and you'll be fine. So what's the least, the, the least common denominator here? It's x squared. So I'm going to multiply each of the terms by x squared. Okay, see what I'm going to do. I usually like separating each of the terms. What's a term? A term is separated from another term 
by a plus sign, a minus sign, or the equal sign. So right here we have three terms, one, two, and three. Each of those terms will get an x squared multiplying it. So see what's gonna happen. It's gonna be x squared multiplied by one over x squared. Okay, multiplied by one over x squared. That's this one. Plus, I'm gonna do the same thing here. It's gonna be x squared times three over x equals x squared times 28. So this is gonna take this out. I'm gonna end up with one plus one of these x's will can what this one will cancel one of these x's and I'll be left with 3x and here I'm going to have 28x squared. So let's form a clean um, quadratic equation by moving these to the other side and having 0 on one side. So eventually we're going to have 28x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. So how do we factor a quadratic equation like this? What would you multiply together to get negative one? No, 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 don't start that way. You have to first look at a, the coefficient of the, the leading term, okay? The leading coefficient has to be one. If it's not one, then you can't start thinking of what to factor with. You have to first multiply this by what is here. A must multiply C. So 28 times negative one gives you negative 28. Now you have to deal with what two numbers you'll multiply to get negative 28. Okay, so if you do that, it will be negative seven and positive four, so that when you add it together, you're gonna get negative three. So the negative has to be the bigger number. So this is gonna be 28 x squared minus seven x plus four x minus one equals zero. Now, um, we can factor this. I didn't show this step here, but I want to show it in this case. So if we factor this, what's common to these two terms? It's 7x. And what will be left will be 4x minus 1 plus. What's common to these two? There's nothing. So only 1 is common. So I don't like writing the 1. I'm just going to write. I'm just going to leave it that way. It's 4x minus 1. Okay, equals 0. So we can pick one of these two. We're going to have 4x minus 1, and then 7x plus 1. We can take this out, you're going to have 1 remaining, so it's going to be 7x plus 1 equals 0. As you can see, we're going to get the same answers that we got here. You're going to have x is equal to 1 over 4, or we're going to have x is equal to negative 1 over 7. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living.